Thanks for taking time out this afternoon to attend this con call. Uh, we have from the management today Mr. Irfan Razak, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Venkat K. Narayana, Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. V. V. B. S. Sharma, Chief Financial Officer. I would now like to hand over the call to the management for their opening remarks. Over to you, gentlemen. Uh, hi, everybody. This is Irfan here. Uh, thanks for joining the call. Uh, I think you have seen the numbers. The results have been announced. I would request uh, Venkat to uh, summarize the entire thing and the road ahead also. So you get a snapshot and then we'll go into Q&A. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for taking time out to be uh, in a post-results conference call of Prestige uh, State. Uh, the quarter that has gone by, especially the Q4, uh, has been uh, very good for us at Prestige State. If you have uh, seen the trend also, between uh, Q1 and Q4, we've been consistently growing in terms of resales. Q2, we had recorded a little over 700 crores of uh, new sales. And Q3, over 800. And Q4, our uh, pre-sales stand at uh, 1,243 crores. And the year as a whole, our total sales stand at 3,300 crores, up by 35% uh, compared to the previous year. The last quarter that has gone by, we had uh, three launches, so two of them are in Bangalore. And both of them have met with a great response. Uh, the contribution of sales from those two projects, namely Prestige Zindal City and uh, Prestige Park Square, uh, is close to 450 crores in the total new sales. And in terms of collections, they have been steady. Uh, quarter on quarter, we've been clocking over 1,000 crores. And this quarter also, the collections are uh, over 1,000 crores. Uh, year as a whole, if you look at total collections, stand at 4,268 crores, up by 4%. This is not including the rental income, like annuity for income that we have got. And uh, in terms of uh, launches for the year as a whole, uh, we had uh, 7 million square foot of launches, uh, spread across five projects, four in Bangalore and one in Chennai. So the operationally, if you look at uh, both in terms of launches, in terms of uh, completion, uh, in terms of uh, new sales, uh, it's been a Good quarter, good financial year, and uh, uh, the year ahead, FY19, is also looking uh, quite good. Uh, in terms of um, uh, financial numbers, if you look at for this quarter, we have clocked the revenue of 1,861 crores. Uh, this is the highest ever that we have done in, in, a, in a given quarter, up by 27% uh, year on year. And the total uh, revenue for the FY18 uh, stand at uh, 5,566 crores up by 14% and uh, uh, EBITDA is uh, at 347 crores uh, for the quarter and the year as a whole EBITDA stands at 1161 crores. Uh, and uh, in terms of PAT, the overall uh, PAT for the quarter is 113 crores and for FI18 it's at around 411 crores. Uh, compared to earlier quarters, PAT margins have been slightly lower this quarter primarily because of number of projects that are nearing completion, which we had said in the even earlier quarter, saying that we will have some cost escalations in the projects that are nearing completion. Uh, that did impact quite a bit, uh, but uh, we hope that going forward, we will be back to the uh, stabilized, earlier stabilized levels, uh, working towards it, how we can uh, have complete control on the costing. The overall unrecognized revenue as of uh, 31st March and at uh, 5,762 crores, and um, Interestingly, if you look at our annuity portfolio, it has been consistently growing. Uh, this year, uh, uh, we have achieved almost as much as what we have guided. Uh, 625 crores is the total existing rental income. And uh, we are looking at clocking little over 825 crores. That is almost uh, 200 crores jump uh, uh, for this fiscal, uh, that is FI19. So broadly, this has uh, been the operational performance and the financial performance for uh, the year that has um, gone by. And uh, uh, in terms of the year ahead, uh, we are looking at building on whatever we have achieved uh, during the last uh, fiscal. Uh, interestingly, uh, we have been present in uh, uh, the South Indian market for a long time, but we have been talking about expanding to other, other geographies. Uh, we have come across some good, interesting uh, uh, opportunities. Uh, we are pursuing them. 
of predominantly uh, the western India and the NCR region. Uh, we have got uh, residential projects that we that we're just tying up and closing the documentation uh, for in uh, Noida as well as in Mumbai. And we also have got a couple of uh, office buildings in each of those regions. So we are excited about this expansion, and uh, we we believe that uh, this year, even uh, if everything falls in place the way we are strategizing, even those projects will be live up and running. Uh, this is the uh, other update that we wanted to give you, and we did uh, post 31st March. Uh, and the platform that we have set up is HCFC for affordable and mid-income housing. We have signed off for the first project, and uh, we are currently in the stage of uh, uh, CPs and other things. Uh, I think uh, with this beginning, we will have many more uh, projects being uh, developed under the portfolio. Uh, as far as office uh, transaction is concerned, uh, it's progressing well. I think uh, uh, by the end of this quarter, we should be able to uh, share uh, the news with you about the portfolio. So with this uh, brief, uh, we would open the forum for question and answers. I have given whatever uh, uh, we have done operationally and financially in terms of uh, business development uh, uh, in the last quarter on the financial year. Uh, Kunal, we can open the forum. Yeah, just to add that uh, we have opened two hotels in this quarter, that is the uh, Conrad as well as the Sheraton Grant uh, and uh, and also the Mysore, uh, we've uh, opened the doors for the mall in Mysore. So all in all, it's been a pretty uh, uh, challenging and exciting uh, quarter and the year itself overall has turned out nicely and I believe uh, uh, the team has worked hard uh, to achieve this success. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Saurabh Kumar from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, on the margins, on the residential business, so year over year, year, your margins have not moved that much and our rental income has grown quite substantially. So that pretty much implies that your residential margins, which are about 13.5-14%, they have not moved up a lot. So do you, I mean, what's causing that and do you expect us to move up at all or no? No, no, it will definitely move up. Uh, the thing is, uh, in fact, this time we recognize some uh, older project, um, I mean, the new, newer project uh, where we had just launched and it has got recognized. So the initial sale value will always be a little lower. As we go on, it will keep increasing. And I believe the uh, there is scope to, A, increase the price and also see that the margins are uh, uh, go up further. And these budgets also, like you see, like we follow POC, there are all certain budgets that have been worked out. Uh, the entire thing will come up when the uh, project gets completed fully, and then in, there will be some uh, short closures on the, uh, of the budget itself. So these things will keep happening, and I don't know how the next quarter will pan out, because next quarter, in case uh, the INDIS 115 is implemented, where we have to do on a... Uh, uh, completely completed method itself, uh, then the entire uh, the math itself changes, and uh, we'll be forced to only declare uh, you know results or profits only once the project is fully completed, which will be completely a different ball game, and it will change the way we work. But then let's see from the and it's this quarter, we are, the, the people have represented to the government not to implement it for real estate. But if it does happen, then the next water corn call will be very different. Uh, yeah. Uh, sort of just to add uh, to what Chairman said, one is uh, the whatever project that we have launched uh, uh, 18 months ago, song, namely Song of South, we pre launched mm -hmm. at a slightly lesser price and that comes for revenue recognition. Those sales have been getting recognized, markets are quite low. The second uh, the factor that has uh, hit this time around is uh, 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 many projects uh, got completed, 
and we had the input credits of uh, um, sales tax by the GS, okay. which we could have taken credit, but then to the extent of inventory that we have in those projects, we had to reverse that uh, because the credit will not be available for the completed project. Even that had a little bit of impact on, on margins. And how much will that credit be? Around 20, 28 crores. 28 crores. Okay. And sir, normally when you underwrite projects, uh, what do you target? Like a 30% margin at gross level? How much do you think you want to make whenever you are uh, like signing yep. new JDAs? 25 to 30% range. Yes, generally that's how we also target it between 25 because less than 25 there's no sense because there will always be some changes or the other as we go along. Uh, and then that's how we take it forward, and I don't think we work uh, for any uh, target less than that, but then ultimately reality turns out to be something else. Fair. And sir, on the hotel business now, Conrad Sheraton are operational, so basically just Marriott is left. That's right. Are you uh, uh, working on that, or uh, is that project shelled? Or? No, 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 it's not shelled, because that's another project that will give great value to the development itself that we have done. And we just took a breather, though the Marriott, the structure is ready. We said we'll focus on these two properties, get them up and running. And now they are up and running. And the good news is, that's what that we don't have to put in any further money into these properties from the start. Uh, they are now, will start paying for themselves. Uh, now the last one is Marriott, it will be a convention center also along with it. It will bring in great value to the city itself. Uh, so it will take us about two years plus to finish it, and uh, hopefully uh, we will do it, and hopefully 100% it should be a grand success. Okay, and just one final question. So what was the debt impact because of the capital land consolidation? And, I mean, including what you paid to capital land and the debt in the entity which you assumed? The capital land consolidation and the capital land uh, related transactions still underway. That will get impacted only this. So, so, not, so this is not part of the net debt you have. Part of it yet. So I think primarily if you look at uh, if that debt increase uh, in the consolidated numbers, uh, if you see, is that two hotel projects and uh, a mall in Mysore, all three of them came to uh, uh, be completed and became operational in the last quarter predominantly. So these three, towards the fact and whatever the spend that we had, uh, we, we had to book, especially you know, doing the development, a lot of material procurement happens in the end. Uh, that's how increased. Second is the large uh, acquisition that we have done uh, at Outer Ring Road uh, to build uh, the office park, which is uh, around 56 acres of land uh, on which we could potentially develop around 6 and a half, 7 million square foot of area. We're targeting to develop first phase of 3 million square foot. This is a big acquisition that we did from Urbana Fund uh, in uh, Sterling Urbana uh, SPV, uh, which we had announced. Okay. And so just one last request, maybe next quarter onwards, subject to whatever India S115 does, if you could just break down your margins between what you own on the residential business and what you own on your annuity business and the hotel business, that will just help us evaluate the company. Oh, certainly. Right. In fact, there's a step in which we are also heading, as I told you, from the next quarter, anyway, we're looking at giving a segment information to you. That should be following this off. Now, what are the questions that you have? Because we also are moving towards trying to give you segment-wise uh, reporting. Uh, it will help not only you, it will help us also to understand where we are heading. And uh, it will also help us to become that much more efficient. Uh, it, okay. it could be working the other way around. Certain debt that we would have taken on our CapEx projects could be uh, since we can't write it off anywhere, it un uh, comes on the p &L account and that gets hit. But if you segment-wise it, then uh, we'll know the exact real reality. All right, so that'll be helpful. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Vandari from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good evening uh, to the management and congrats on launching projects after a long time. Uh, so my question is actually two. One... You know, I could not see the slide on guidance for FY19 for this year. If you could help us, you know, give the guidance around your pre-sales number and assuming the index, you know, doesn't change, what would be the revenue number? Fine. And the second question being, Abhishek? The second yes, question was... Uh, hmm. Three years. Okay. See, the thing is, guidance, like last year we had given a guidance of 3, 5 and we achieved about 3, uh, three, three or 3, 4. 
Uh, what we would like to do is we'd like to be a little more cautious, so we don't want to give a very high guidance and then again revise it. So we would like to give a guidance between 3, 5 and 4,000. Mostly 4,000 is very achievable. And uh, we'll take it from there. There are a lot of launches in the pipeline. I think we should exceed that number. Yeah, that's in terms of uh, the pre-sales. Even the turnover, if 115 does not come and hit, we should be clocking a similar number of turn a similar amount of turnover, around 4,000 crores in terms of turnover. Three and a half to 4,000 crores would be the range that we want to give for the turnover. As so the collections are concerned, again, we would look at clocking similar to that of what we've been doing. One is ongoing projects where we get the installments and the new launches, progressive payments, and the completed projects when we sell, we have a lot of cash flows to come up front. Uh, again, the collection front, we look at the range of uh, around 4,000, 3750 to 4,000. Launches, we are looking at, there are a lot of projects that are uh, lined up for the launch. Uh, uh, we, and we are looking at across geographies at least to launch around 10 million square foot. So very confident that uh, given the various stages, advanced stages of approval, we should be able to launch 10 million. The completion front last year we have done around 8 million square foot and we are looking at little over 10 million uh, uh, square foot of uh, delivery. 12 million we can commit. Yeah, it could be even more because many projects are nearing completion. Maybe 10 to 12 million is the range. The team is working to hand over something like 10,000 apartments in this financial year out of which 3, 5 we have already done. So 6.5 is remaining which I think we are pretty confident of doing that. And uh, leasing, uh, given uh, the status of various projects, Shantani Ketan Mall, that is going to be ready and operational, and uh, new blocks in Cessna, uh, uh, and uh, some iconic development in, uh, uh, one iconic development in uh, in Bangalore, CPD, Prestige Falkanta. Uh, uh, we would look at uh, 2 million square foot of uh, leasing uh, guidance. And the exit rental income is where uh, we made uh, good progress. Uh, we are looking at uh, the, the exit rental income for the next year to be between 800 to 825 crores. So significant jump from where we are. These are broad uh, guidances. So what we will do is uh, we'll update this uh, guidance and uh, re-upload the presentation so that you'll have this uh, uh, as a tracker. Uh, only exactly. thing right now, as you said, uh, 115 guidance note is a big impacting thing. So if we go back to the completed method of accounting, a lot of undoing of revenue that we have booked before. And having multiple accounting systems, one for income tax base and the ICTS, these are going to be big challenges and MAT implications that uh, uh, arise because of that. But we will deal with it as and when, uh, you know, we will we'll, we'll have to follow the uh, guidance note. Right now there are a lot of representation that have gone to the ministry to look at it, uh, but we have not heard anything in uh, affirmative. Sure. So that will be helpful, you know, once we have that tracker. Uh, the second question is, you know, just trying to understand your logic of getting into, you know, Bombay and Noida when we have such large amount of work still to be done in Bangalore and some of the southern markets where we are already there. Don't you think it will dilute our focus, you know, because these markets are completely different, much more different. I'm sure you understand the dynamics in these two better than we do. Uh, so I'm just trying to understand what makes you go out of uh, the places where you have been so strong. Because now Bangalore is highly, highly dependent on Bangalore and then now the, we have got Hyderabad, Chennai and then of course uh, centers like Mangalore and Cochin are here two cities really don't give you that much of numbers. Now if we have to get uh, better sales and if we have to uh, you know, increase the number say from 4,000 which we are talking about today and double it, uh, there is no way that I can, sitting only in Bangalore, get that number. We will be always going between three, three and a half, four thousand, maximum 5,000 in this region. And if I have to really, really get the numbers that we are talking of doubling it, it has to come from a Mumbai and a, uh, and a NCR. And uh, I believe the opportunity is there. There is a strong sense in the brand. Obviously, they won't be defocused. There will be a separate management team that will be handling it. Uh, of course, with the guidance uh, from the senior management, and I believe that we can make it into a big success. And we are starting the cities with some good locations, which I believe will do extremely well, uh, uh, taking the, uh, the the trust the brand has. That's helpful. My last question is, sir, you know, we almost have almost 900, 950 crore of ready inventory in your books. In one of the slides, you mentioned it. Yes. So any more kind of activation schemes you are trying to, uh, you know, launch as you done last year to help you probably expedite the sales over here and recover some of the monies from here? 
No, it's the opposite. Actually, we ran a campaign, uh, no offer, no discount campaign, because I believe real estate is the only asset that over a period of time only grows in value. And uh, the, the, there was a, some sort of a desperation setting into the market with all our peers getting into this and starting even to offer. And that was creating a lot of confusion among the buyers. And the buyers were actually, instead of buying, were postponing their uh, buying. So uh, that really worked in our favor. Uh, we believe in giving a good product in a good location at the right price. And uh, there's no more offers or no more discounts. And whatever it sells, and I think the product will sell. And over a period of time, it's only increased. I think we have diluted a lot of our stock. It's uh, some of the stock that is... Uh, getting completed or almost ready is what is coming as ready inventory. But I'm very, very confident even this will sell and I don't see any reason to give any discounts or offers at all. If you see, uh, uh, I will check uh, the total uh, sales for the year, the close 3,300 crores. Barring the 4,500 crores, the remaining uh, sales have come from uh, uh, either project nearing completion or completed projects. So we've been focusing on liquidating that inventory. Last year, entire sales have come from only from ongoing projects and engineering completion projects because launches have happened just now. Uh, the focus will always be there. We look at uh, strategizing as to how to push this and, and, and then liquidate as soon as possible. Sure. Thank you. And thank you for the year ahead and especially on your platforms. We hope to get more news on that very soon from you. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Atal Tiwari from City Group. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir, so just one uh, data point. What was the customer advance number on the balance sheet? Uh, the overall, what you have received in terms of uh, uh, collections? Uh, uh, the the ending customer advance number on the liability side of the balance sheet. Would you have that handy? Let me pull it out for you. Customer advances will probably be only uh, money is received from against the revenue non-sales. Yeah. Uh, that will be against the sales that we have got and the uh, way the revenue hasn't been bought. Anyway, you check it. I'll pull it out. Allow me some time during the call. I'll answer that. Okay, sure, sir. Thank you. I am done. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Samir Baisiwala from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you so much and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Venkat, what is going to be your capital outlay or capital requirements for fiscal 19? Fiscal uh, towards the CAPEX project? Well, everything here yeah, towards CAPEX project, towards HDFC platform. I think you, have, you said you have not done capital land, Sarjapur deals, then Mumbai NCR entry. So if you can just break it up and let us know. Both Mumbai and NCR is joint development uh, yeah, model. Yeah, yeah. We will not have, uh, we'll have outlay, but not significant outlay. And uh, as far as the uh, HDFC platform yeah, is making off. and uh, some of the CAPEX projects that are nearing completion and the expansion yeah, and uh, progress that we need to make in terms of malls, that are uh, 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 nearing completion, which is the uh, Forum Shantani Ketan primarily, and also the incremental spend that we have to have on the uh, JW Marriott Hotel. Uh, it will not be completed this fiscal, it will be completed uh, uh, next fiscal. All put together for this fiscal, the outlay is going to be around 1,284. Uh, so you said 1,284, is that the number? Yeah, 1,284. Okay. And, and this does not include the two transactions, Capital Land and Sarjapur. That's another 700. That's, uh, ca uh, sorry, Capital Land and what, what else? And Sarjapur, specific projects? Sarjapur is uh, added. Sarjapur is actually partly done the transaction. We have finished the transaction. The transaction. Sarjapur is already money out of the pocket. Capital Land, uh, what we have to pay is already reflected in the books as everything. Yeah. So it's more of some compliance issue. That's the reason why we've not paid. Otherwise, the money is being kept. No, but you said it's not reflected in the current uh, net yet, right? What he meant was that the money is set aside. And it's in the cash and bank balances, if you see. Yeah, but which will then uh, get deducted from there and therefore... Absolutely, that's absolutely. You're not going to raise that money. Correct, you're right. Okay, fair enough. And But uh, for Sarjapur, just to go back, uh, I saw, I think, slide number 16, it still shows there as 33%, so... 
a surprise when you say that you have paid the money. Number? Light number 1616. That is the same land parcel, 182 acres. It still shows 33% as your share. Oh, sir. It, it is uh, 100%. It, okay. It's uh, uh, it need to be rectified. It's 100%. And 182 acres to 100% right now. Okay, perfect. So, um, so roughly, uh, 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 what would be your guidance so for... more details about Samir, this entire uh, thing. This acquisition has happened from two people. One is uh, the fund, Raising State, uh, which held 33%. That is completely done, completed transaction, the shares are in our favor. The other one is the landowner uh, who was holding uh, 33%. That transaction was underway, and... Uh, it's completed in terms of documentation, but it has some uh, documentation issues. And uh, uh, this quarter, it's 100%. So it was done in two tranches to separate these things. Okay. So, uh, so what's your guidance for fiscal 19 net gearing? Net gearing. So we've done some big acquisitions this year. One is uh, the Sajapur acquisition. Other is Outer Ring Road. Uh, office park acquisition, third is a capital land acquisition, which uh, actually put some strain on the balance sheet. Uh, now, here, I had, if you look at, uh, we will have, once we dilute our stake in uh, uh, one of the residential projects where it is coming in, we should have a capital in, uh, cap cash inflow coming in. Likewise, when we uh, complete the office platform again, cash inflow coming in. So either those inflows will be used to grow and or uh, towards the spend of uh, Apex that I just uh, given you the number, or to reduce the debt. So all in all, we are looking at uh, you know uh, consolidated basis to bring down our gearing, uh, our stabilize uh, than increase around the same level. Okay, this is very helpful, Venkat. Uh, thanks for this. And just uh, on the outer ring road uh, business park land that we acquired, 56 acres. What's the price that you paid for that? So what we have paid is 336 crores for 80 percent stake. Okay. Okay. Well, one final one from my side, uh, if I may. Uh, on your slide number six, um, looks like your Q4 rental uh, income is uh, yes. a bit lower than Q3. Yeah, Q4 is a bit lower, but overall, if you see, it is higher than the last year. One is uh, some tenants have paid uh, pay rent uh, uh, once in six months than a monthly or uh, quarterly, and uh, there is one place which has fallen vacant, which uh, new rent has not started. And I think you have rightly observed, it is 164 to 157, but overall, if you look at year as a whole, it is 619. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhinav Sinha from CLSA. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, so can you uh, break down the sales guidance for next year uh, into what you're expecting from new launches and possibly some color on the pipeline as well? Co color? Uh, on the new launch plan? pipeline? On the new launch pipeline, yeah. New launch pipeline would be around 10 million square foot, uh, Abhina. That's what we are looking at. And um, which projects would come here from your uh, uh, forthcoming list? Yeah, so let me spell it out for you. Yeah, so yeah. So if you look at uh, slide number thirty six. Yeah. So we will have, uh, I think. So, uh, 18, Prasthes Thompson, which is in Cochin, 17, which is uh, Pallavaram, and uh, we will have 15, which is Prasthes Elysian, we will have 12, which is Prasthes Botanic, uh, we will have uh, uh, first one, which is Prasthes Greenmore, and uh, there's a project which is not in upcoming projects yet, but we are working on it to make it live, which is a large uh, development uh, around Sajapur. That project alone would be around uh, 10 or 7 million, but it will be launched in the phased manner. This, is, will, this will be no. with the platform, is it? Sorry? 
this one will be with the platform yeah, yeah, yeah. Sapur yeah. could yeah. be with the platform yes it is okay and so for the uh, remaining projects also uh, will those have a possibility of going through the platform route or no the remaining projects yeah they do have a possibility but then the newer ones the old ones will not Okay, so starting from Sajapur, we should look at how the platform develops. Is that correct? Correct, correct, correct. Okay, and sir, can you offer us some more color on what to expect from the office uh, platform? So is right. it a stake sale? Are we, you know, going to develop also? Look at upcoming projects office. We've got a huge yeah. portfolio, so which is around 14 million square foot. Now, what we are talking about uh, doing uh, a platform right now is 8.5 million square foot. In that 8.5, a uh, little over 5 million square foot is complete, uh, and uh, 3 plus million is under construction. That is, right now, what we are talking about is a platform transaction, 8.5 million. Okay. Now, there are many projects that are not in the platform that are independently being developed by uh, the siege. We will look at after they complete... Uh, uh, either to put in the platform or, uh, uh, you know, complete and own. So we will look at the strategy for the remaining. Not everything under office is in the platform. Likewise, not everything under residential is also on the platform. But having said that, all mid-income uh, products we are looking at putting in HDFC platform. Okay. Um, also, the, if I... Uh you know, when you talk about this mid-income project going into the platform, I mean, uh, how should we look at it? I mean, uh, do you like offer your project first to HDFC platform? Or you, you based on the location, you think this is more suitable to mid-income? There are two things, sir. Now, every time we look at a property, one is uh, the potential that property has got. Second is the kind of transaction that we are doing. Now, if project has, property has got a potential, and say JD that landowner is preferring, now, JDs are not going to go on the platform unless it's a big JD which requires substantial amount of cash outflow. The other one is now outright purchase. Wherever there is outright purchase and we intend to do that mid-income project costing under 1.25 crores less than 1 crore, uh, we will uh, prefer to put it in the platform. Okay. And should we expect the Mumbai and uh, Noida projects to also be under the platform? Mm -hmm. We have not uh, had any concrete discussion here on those. Okay. Okay, thank Why? you. Because of the yeah. side may not fall under the definition that we're looking at. Right. Right, right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Puneet Gulati from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. Just uh, carrying on this, uh, so Basically, Mumbai and NCR projects would be launched under the Prestige brand name. Is that fair to assume? Yes. Okay. And uh, how would the, the platform projects be branded? Will, will they be all co-branded or essentially Prestige only still? Branded as Prestige projects only. Okay. They will not be sold as Prestige as DFC. There is no plan for that? No, no. Branding will go as a Prestige project. There is no separate understanding on the branding. Okay. If they want to, we'll write as a prestige HCFC joint venture, but as a basic understanding. Okay, okay. And uh, on this, uh, the platform uh, for office, uh, why is uh, why is some portfolio kept separate and why uh, is some going under platform, if you can help us understand and some thoughts behind it? Look at uh, is the, the progress and stage of a construction, and second is the size of the project. Something which we are not immediately starting to work, and then we are doing more of a land transaction. We said, let's keep it aside as and when we are looking at the uh, launch of the projects, uh, we'll see whether we should pull. Other ones are smaller, less than half million. So those are out. Okay, and they will remain out. There's no chance of them getting in the platform at all. If we want to, we can. See, because there is also other business model that we've been following uh, earlier. Yeah. We used to sell office spaces like the way we used to sell uh, residential Correct. Uh, and then collect money and do Even that we have not been doing off late. Even that opportunity exists. So it's a combination of wanting to own, wanting to start or sell or wanting to put in a platform. So we'll play by project by project. Okay. 
Okay. So the small projects are, uh, you know, uh, CBD projects which you intend to own. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, for the ORR acquisition, is the entire 336 crore paid? Yeah, yeah, paid. Okay. And when you mentioned the 1284 crore of capital spend, that includes the spend under HDFC platform, but does not include the normal construction spend for your regular projects. Is that the right understanding? Uh, regular projects means the residential projects meant yes. for... Residential projects, yeah. It, it doesn't, right? It does not, it does not. But the residential project spend will be little over 3,000 crores. So last year what we have spent, uh, all projects put together, residential projects alone is 2,815 crores. And uh, residential, commercial, retail, hospitality, all put together, our construction spend last year, is around 3,482 crores. Okay, so so for on the office part, 3482, which is now down to 1,284. No, 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 no. What I am saying is, last year full spend is 3,482. Okay. After 2,815 is the residential, balance was a capex. Okay, 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 okay. Got it, got it. Now, this 12, how, is it possible to, uh, you know, strip out how much would you spend for HDFC platform under the, from 1284, so that we get, you know, proper capex sense? No, in, 18, uh, 2, 18, 1284 is the total outlay that's been planned on four counts. One is the balance amount that needs to be paid for the acquisition that we have done. Okay. And the second day is the CAPEX projects that are nearing completion that we need to incrementally spend right. next year. And few of the planned acquisitions, including what we have to deploy under HGFC. As of now, whatever we are planning to put in at HGFC towards that. So, you know, the Q2, Q3, there are newer projects that are coming in. Right now, we have not planned. Okay. 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 Great. That's all from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Adidev Chattopadhyay from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for giving me the opportunity. I have a few questions. The first is on the, on the rental business. Now I believe uh, as per the slide 20 and 21, so we will be up to over 1,000 crores of rental income once all the ongoing projects also get completed. Uh, guidance for exit for FI19 is 820 crores. So this incremental 200 crores beyond FI19, so when do we see that coming into the books? I think all the ongoing projects, which have got a potential of 243 in terms of office and 140 in terms of uh, retail, uh, totaling to 380 crores, will get completed in a maximum period from today, if you look at in 24 months to 30 months. 24 months to 30 months, okay. Well, this is ongoing. The upcoming projects may take a little longer, so we have not yet begun work. They are in the various uh, stages of uh, uh, planning. So those will take from now three to five years. Okay, and your upcoming includes this recent Sajapur acquisition for that commercial space or excludes that, the potential rental income for the office? No, oh, it doesn't have that. Okay, that is over and above the... The land. Okay. Not yet come to the project here. Okay. Then so just as a follow-up on that, so what is the pending CAPEX now? You said in 24-30 months, we will be uh, crossing the 1,000 crore mark. So as an aggregate, what is the total uh, balance CAPEX to be incurred? Here in those uh, slides, if you look at slide 20, hmm. which is what now ongoing and upcoming, towards which we have balance to spend the money. You yeah. No, no. So my question was for this, uh, for the ongoing projects, right, 243 in office and around... Uh, roughly 140 crores the retail portion. So to, to, means to get to that rental, what is the overall balance capex which is spending on all these projects? So give the number to you. Yeah. 520. 520 crores, okay. Okay, so, so that is the amount. So then just another clarification, the guidance you are given on the residential, or, uh, which you are saying, so that includes any projects on the HDFC platform, it means it includes everything, or uh, how is it? It is that we are given uh, for 10 million square foot of launches. Yeah, yeah. It does include one project, one phase of it. So there is a large project that is on the platform. 
okay. the entire project may not get launched at one go. That is around 7 million square foot. One phase of it will get launched. Okay. And so just if you could just, I may have missed, you may have mentioned this earlier. So for last year, what was the total construction spend in terms of on the residential, I mean for the, for the on the for sale projects and on the CapEx side, if you could just break that the down. The project is 2,800 crores. Okay. And uh, the CapEx projects that is commercial, retail and hospitality all put together is around uh, 680 crores. 680 crores. Okay, okay. Fine. That's uh, very helpful. And all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Govind Agarwal from Alpha Accurate Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, hi. I have two questions. Uh, one is the guidance which you have given uh, for the sales, collections, and the launch. Is it for the total or is it the prestige share alone? Total, sir. Total, okay. And uh, the second question is with regard to the launches in the fourth quarter, 7 million square feet. Uh, if you can give the timeline for the execution in the, the current financial year, how much you think would be able to complete? Uh, the completion? Yeah. This is between 10 and 12 million square foot. Right in. 10 and 12 million completion. That food will complete this year. In fact, uh, Mr. Razak, uh, in his opening remarks, was mentioning residential alone, the target is to hand over 10,000 uh, units this year, of which we have already done 3,500, and the balance will get delivered. Okay, so balance 6,500, you think will, will get delivered in this year? Yeah, yeah. 3,500 3, also were delivered this year only, earlier. Okay, that is already done. Okay. okay. Earlier this okay. year, so last month. Okay, so this 10 to 12 million, which uh, the chairman said, includes a part of this 7 million which has been launched in Q4? No, 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 no. they won't get completed. No, no, no. no the, talking about the ongoing yes. projects that yes. are yes. not yes. 7 million will take uh, 36 months to get completed. 36 months. Okay, understood. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Anand from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, my first question is with respect to the entire Could you share? Abhishek, your voice is breaking. We can your voice talk. is breaking, Abhishek. Uh, is it better now? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, basically just wanted to have some more details on uh, Noida and Mumbai. Uh, what is the sellable idea? What kind of a product are you launching? And actually, uh, uh, Abhishek, your voice is breaking, but I understood your question. You are saying, what are you trying to launch in uh, Noida? What are you? What kind of projects you are doing in Mumbai? Noida is yeah. a mid-income project. Total developable area of the project is around 2 million square foot. It will get launched in a phased manner. Uh, that's about Noida. As far as Mumbai is concerned, it's in a very premium location. Even if we do standard projects, realization per square foot will be higher. So thereby the ticket price of that uh, unit will be higher. The total developable area in the project will be a little over half a million. Okay. Uh, in Noida, sir, just uh, understanding from your side, uh, the market has been pretty uh, weak. Uh, what's the rationale in going into Noida market? The idea is to get into the NCR market, uh, understand that market well. We know that that market has not been doing to its potential in the last couple of years. So that's the reason why we look at uh, that market picking up in the entire uh, time. We believe that there is potential in that market yeah. and we believe that we will definitely get a good sales traction and it will be a good launch pad for us to diversify into other markets. Right. And also if you look at the number of developers uh, locally that are present, there are not many because of the credibility crisis that existing developers are facing. We believe that is the right opportunity to enter there and uh, take the water with the, uh, uh, the reasonably sized project so that uh, we can capitalize on the opportunities uh, when the market uh, moves forward as a peak. Hindi, uh, sir, if you could help me, uh, we have found 7 million square feet uh, this quarter. Uh, of which, uh, so firstly, what was the sellable area and what was the sellable area attributable to prestige? Um, 7 million is the total. The yeah. attributable area will be a little over 50% of that. 
uh, basically, I understand general property is thirty-three percent, thirty-seven percent owned. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, twenty-seven. So, thirty-seven so is the landowner. Sold at auction. Mm. Right, seven is the total. Yeah, and uh, around fifty percent is asking. Uh, okay, so three and a half million square feet, but this is developable area. Uh, sellable area will be. Yes, developer is there. Sellable area will be minus parking, so it should be less by. Don't have it handy with me. I'll tell you. It should be less by 20%. So 80% of uh, 3.5, I think, right? Uh, we'll share it with you after the call. Sure. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, okay. Thank you, Abhishek. Yeah, thank you. The next question is from the line of Tanuj Mukherjee from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, most of my questions have been answered. Just uh, two questions. Firstly, uh, Pestris had announced a term sheet deal with GIC in the month of February and suggested that the deal will be completed within a month's time. Uh, can you elaborate on what has been the reason for delay in finalizing the deal with GIC? No, we said we will do that uh, transaction within 90 days, not 30 days. That's the uh, timeline that we have kept. That's what we have agreed on also. Okay. Uh, right now, it's in various stages of due diligence and technical diligences. Simultaneously, documentation is also getting done. Hopefully, we should bring it to uh, the end uh, by end of this quarter. Okay. Uh, and uh, secondly, I believe you're launching projects in NOIDA in the mid-income segment. So why not launch this as part of the HDFC uh, affordable housing or mid-income platform? That's more of a JD. It's not an outright buy. So that's what we have. I was explaining uh, to earlier question also. We look at each property. If the JD doesn't require uh, capital. Cash capital outflow from us, so we'll go ahead and do. If we are buying the land, then we we'll look at it again at price. Okay. And lastly, what was the operating cash flow for this quarter? Net operating cash flows for this quarter are uh, 209 crores. And this excludes the interest expense, right? This excludes all interest expense, yes. Okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for their closing comments. Well, thank you for your participation, all of you, and the insightful questions that you've asked. I hope we've been able to clarify and come up to see. Is there anything that has been any further clarification? Venkat and I would be really, really glad to answer. Uh, and uh, the overall... Uh, uh, the feeling in the company is that we can scale up to the next level and that's the reason why we are expanding to the other geographies and I'm sure when the when it comes to it, you'll see the difference. And uh, we are hopeful that uh, even this will add up to the overall revenue to the company. Uh, and uh, any other clarifications are always welcome. I will be more than happy to answer offline. Uh, thank you uh, for your participation in this call and uh, uh, it's always like you're interacting with you. We look forward to your continued support. Most of you have been in touch with us, giving us input as to uh, how each uh, market has been behaving uh, and uh, the planning out. Uh, we have uh, strategized next level of growth plan for the next three to five years. Uh, step towards the direction is the, the organizational restructuring that we have done in terms of verticals. Now each of the verticals have got their own growth plans, be it residential, be it office, uh, malls, now we've got uh, eight malls sending. We're looking at how to make it 15 malls, 20 malls in the times to come. And the hospitality, most of the uh, hotels are operating except for one. Uh, so we have categorized uh, each vertical, uh, how should it grow next three to five years. And we're also looking at the growing uh, uh, our presence deeper in the existing market that we are there, be it Hyderabad, be it uh, Bangalore, and also wider, uh, expanding to uh, Western India, Mumbai, Pune, Pune, there were some big office space coming up almost close to a million square foot. 
We start the construction once we see the last leg of approval. The market has been doing well. That's led to the potential of rental income again. Likewise, the NCR market, which has got potential, is not doing that well with uh, uh, a couple of projects. So we are looking at uh, the exciting uh, period ahead, given the kind of uh, uh, things that are happening in the real estate industry, uh, huge amount of consolidation that is happening with the DERA, with the GSTs and other things. I think this is the time for us to grow to the next level, as Chairman said, and uh, also have presence uh, across various uh, promising uh, geographies which has got great potential. We look forward to your continued support and thank you once again for being on the call.